Today we'll be learning about owls in the night sky. We'll look at owl parents and their offspring in their habitat, and we'll be creating a visual arts project dealing with lines and art and owls. Hi, my name is Jolie Noel, and I'm with the PACE program in Lafayette, Louisiana. Please pause this video and gather your supplies. If at any point you need a little more time to complete parts of the project, just pause and catch up. Materials needed for today. Pencil, white paper, you can use paper bag, cereal box, construction paper, in the brown shades. Markers, we'll be using blue, yellow, orange, crayons, white, yellow, orange, blue, brown, black, scissors, and a small bottle of glue or tape. What does the word nocturnal mean? If you said active at night, you're right. Most owls are nocturnal. Today we will create an artwork showing the night sky. My favorite night sky was done by the Dutch post-impressionist painter, Mr. Vincent van Gogh. Most of the artwork we have from Van Gogh dated in the last two years of his life. We're going to use his famous painting, Starry Night, as the inspiration for the background of our artwork, just like I have here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we'll get our sheet of paper out. We're going to put it horizontally so that it goes from one side to the other. Not vertical. Vertical is up and down, and horizontal is across. We're going to place it all the way across. And um, when we looked at Van Gogh's artwork, we noticed something that kind of did this kind of wave. It kind of This is more what we call a spiral. And a spiral looks like this. You go around and make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, or if you want to go smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and you can do them in different ways, different directions, all right? But uh, in uh, Van Gogh's artwork, it kind of looks like it kind of spirals outward and it goes into like a wave, all right? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a blue marker, and uh, you're going to find the middle section of your page. We're going to start somewhere in this little section here and uh, we're going to go around and then let it wave outward. So here we go. We're going to go around and let it wave outward. All right. Then we have another one that's going to be coming here. I'm going to go ahead and put mine from this side. You decide how, how, if it's easier for you if you prefer to go this way and then end up there, or if you want to go and reverse it, I'm going to go ahead and try having fun reversing it. So there's my little wave there. Okay. So we did that with blue, first of all. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change our color, and we're going to look for the yellow, the yellow marker. Uh, we're going to find a spot that we want to go ahead and put us a moon. Now he uses a crescent moon in the top right corner. Uh, so I'm going to find my place where I want my moon. Um, if you want to do a different style moon, you might want a new moon, a full moon. You know, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put mine here. Let's see. And Okay, it's about how big it's going to be. And I'll just go over it a few times so that I get my nice, it kind of almost looks like a banana. There we go. That's my moon. I'm going to just fill it in a little bit more. Now, uh, besides our moon here, we're going to also have some stars because it is Starry Night. That's why he titled the piece Starry Night. Um, I'll let you pick like five or six, you know, don't do more than eight. But um, let's see, because our picture's not that going to be uh, too full if we have it that way. Let's see, I'm going to put a little spot. This is going to be where my stars are going to be. I'll have another star here. Uh, I don't know, maybe I have one right here. I could have another one down here. Uh, let's see. I don't want to put them all in the same... Yeah, that's good. That'll work. 
Oh, well. Okay, I'll go ahead and put another one here. Wherever you, th you think you like them. I know it's kind of hard for you to see where mine are. I'm just going right back over them, trying to make them a little darker, a little bit darker. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a white crayon. And uh, of course I have using little bitty pieces of crayon. Um, that's all I have since we're, we can't go to the store very often right now. Um, we're going to go ahead and circle around each one of these stars. I'm going to fill over right on top of that star. I'm going to do that with white. Um, in a few minutes we're going to be using uh, crayon to rub over this and uh, I don't want, just in case my crayon, um, I don't want my crayon to um, turn my artwork another color. See we're going to have yellow and blue and what happens when you mix yellow and blue? They turn what color? Green. So I'm trying to uh, avoid it. Now if I would be doing uh, like oil pastels and I'd be doing watercolor wash over this, uh, it would be look really cool if I had white um, little dashes around it. But since I don't, the white won't show very much with the crayon. So I'm going to go around each one of these. I did put this one, it didn't look too dark. So now we're going to go ahead and find our moon. And you see the inside of our moon? We're going to go ahead and fill it in. That's my circle that would go. And then I'm going to go around the outside of it. And I'm going to also cover right on top of my yellow. I'm going to cover right on top of my yellow. Cover right on top of my yellow. There we go. To try to make sure I have all that area. So we have the white. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get that yellow again marker and we're going to go ahead and go around our moon with dashed lines. Dashed lines. We'll go right around it with dashed lines. It's like I'm making a little treasure map. Or it's like the road. Can you see how I went around it with dashes? The next thing we're going to do is go around each one of these stars with dashes. Each one of these stars with dashes. Yellow dashed lines. yellow dashed lines. There we go. So I have my yellow, did my yellow. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a different color. I'm going to go ahead and get orange. And we're going to do the same thing. The re we actually fill up the rest of the page with dashes. We're going to trail little dashes all around each of our moon and our stars. There's my dashed lines. This one shows up a little better. It's a darker color so you can see it easier on the screen. There we go. So we filled it with our, we trailed it, should I say, just, just like it's a little trail, or uh, like we'd see on the road, our road lines. We're going to go ahead and go back to the yellow again. And we're going to go ahead and make another one. When I do this with oil pastels, I'll put um, other light colors in between, like the white, because when I paint over it, it'll show and look, it'll, that white space. Of course our paper is white and our white oil pastel, when you have them together it won't show, but when you do that watercolor wash over it, it'll like appear like magic. So here we go, we're going to do this again with our yellow. Put in our dash lines all around. 
each one, the moon and the stars, can't quite see what I'm doing right here, but I'm going to go with the flow. There we go. That's our dashed lines. We're filling in. This is our background for our for our owl artwork. This is going to be what's going to be in the back, whereas our owls are going to be in the foreground in the front. This will be our back. So now we have it, and we have each one of the stars kind of lit up. We're going to go ahead and um, get our blue out. Now, um, normally, I would have this, uh, like if I was doing oil pastels, I'd have done uh, white and yellow on both sides of the lines. But see, my white really won't show very much. In fact, um, of course, we know we don't see it here. But um, even when I color it, I take my rubbing, it's going to be all blue anyway. So here's my blue. And um, I'm going to go ahead and do another blue here. We're going to do our blue trailing of our dashed lines. In the front and the back of each of those spirals and waves. There we go. I have room for another one right there. Now, fun part. We're going to have to go back on everything and go around with a blue dash line. Around each one of the, the moon and the stars. The moon and the stars. Artists use different kinds of lines to show movement. And this is showing the movement. In Van Gogh's case, this is the movement of the sky. It can be clouds. Sometimes it can be the wind blowing. Or you might want to show movement like this. There we go. See, we went through it all around everything here. There we go. Now, the next thing is we're going to fill up each little section full of the little dash lines. The idea is to kind of trail them. Now, if you have something in the way, you don't cross that. You just keep going. So here's my dashes here. So if you're going to run into something, you stop. If you're going to run into something, you stop. I'm going to just go ahead because I know I'm going to be finishing this up. We're just finishing up each one of these areas. I'm trailing lines and I stop when I run into another area where there is other lines it's going to show movement in the sky this is the fun part and if you see a spot where you can go ahead and add a little bit more in there fine this is almost like a little V right here. See, I have all the top done, now I have to do all the bottom.
usually when I'm in a classroom. A lot of times I'll do artwork on something like this. Sometimes I do it upside down and backwards. Usually when I have to draw, I have to do that way. See how the lines are starting to show movement? It looks super cool. I can't quite see what I'm doing. Okay. There we go. And so that's our artwork so far. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get that little blue crayon. Um, sometimes if you don't if you don't have it uh, peeled or anything, you have to use it very lightly. Just kind of do the top of the crayon. See how my white here is kind of flat. I've been using it quite a bit. Um, but this one, I have some old crayons, some older crayons that I use for, for rubbing. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to just rub right over everything. See how we rub? We're going to rub over everything. And we're going to rub over the whole piece. So don't forget when we're rubbing, you make sure you have it down and you kind of pinch it and you're rubbing it this way so that you cover more surface with it. Now, if, of course, if you don't have it, you, I'm sure you can just use the top of your crayon if it's a full big crayon, but um, it will make it kind of flat. I don't mind flat crayons because I end up using it all. I can use it either way, um, but uh, I never have extra crayons. I always use every bit of all my crayons. So um, I'll give you a few moments and for you to get that done. Most but not all owls are monogamous. That means they stay together for life. Owls are very territorial. They defend ownership of an area. They also camouflage. What's the word camouflage mean? If you said blend in with its surroundings, you're correct. Owls take over abandoned nests from other birds because they're poor nest builders. The mother owl lays eggs over a course of a few days, so owls hatch from different days from their siblings. The father owl delivers food to the nest ten times a day. Larger prey is ripped apart and fed to the owlets piece by piece until the owlet is old enough to swallow a smaller prey whole. Owls hatching from eggs are called a chick. Baby owls then become a young owlet. If I compared them to people, in your teen years, you would be called a fledgling. That's at the time when they learn how to fly. In their fledgling years, of course. And then they grow to become adults. Owlets are born with a tooth. It's called an egg tooth. And that'll fall off after a week or two. Owlets are fast growing. Depending on the species, maybe owls stay in the nest for about six weeks. After hatching, they are full grown at eight or nine weeks. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create us an owl. Um, you can make all different kinds of owls. I'm going to show you one that I was working on. Um, I did put this on a cereal box top. This would be an example of what we can do. I'll just put him right here for now. Um, I actually, I have all kinds of little owls. I, have, I did all kinds of little owls. Some that might look like this. Oops. Some that might look like this. I'm going to show you how to do one style. And um, these are really fun. Maybe I'll do that for the little ones. Like this. And like 
this one. I'm going to put them both together. Chances are I'm going to put those, one of those, you know, with my owl. I'm going to put a little nest. Uh, actually, I did one. I wanted to do it on a box top, but if I draw it in pencil, while you're drawing in pencil, you can't quite see it. And um, just to make it easier for me to draw it for you, I'm going to go ahead and draw it with uh, this uh, brown marker on here. Now, I want to use the one that's out of the box top, cereal box top. But, because uh, it looks totally cool when you do it. I'm going to go ahead and draw mine right here, and you can go ahead and do yours. Let's see. Um, what you're going to do first is you can get your pencil, and we're going to draw it in pencil lightly. So if you make any mistakes, you can come back to it after a while. No big deal. I'm going to show you how to draw a simple owl. Um, there's many different ways, and I draw them many different ways, and it, it may come out uh, differently each time you do it. First thing, here's my paper, and it's vertical. Um, and I'm going to see, this is about the midway of my paper, and I'm going to come down half of that. So uh, I guess I could fold it at the very bottom to the middle and open it up, but it's going to be down here. And I'm going to see, um, thinking about the letter W, W, and here's a W right here on my paper, and I'm going to put another W. Alright, uh, I'm going to come down to the very bottom of my page, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bitty dot here. Okay, a little bitty dot that's right here, if you can see it. Um, I don't want to put it too dark, because I might not actually hit that spot. Uh, we'll, we'll be cutting this out, so don't worry if you have some extra things. I guess I could put it a little darker, just in case. Okay, you see my little dot here now. Um, and we're going to go ahead and draw a line coming from, that's where, that's my branch where my owl is going to be. Here's going to be the top of the owl feet. Now an owl foot has like four toes on it, and it's got these long talons, but it's clamping around that branch, so it might not show the talons. And I'm going to put another curve up here. Um, usually you will see like two toes or three toes, depending on how it's clamping that. Now, um, the three toes are re like regular little fingers, and one is an opposable thumb, like, like our thumb, just to let you know. Okay, so, and here's going to be the top of my branches. I'm going to do that like that. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to just come down. I'll stand straight up almost all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and come and do a straight line. Oh, actually, it's going to be a curve line. To that point, there's my curve line. Remember how to do a curve line? Our curve line. Our curve line. And I'm going to do another one on this side here, too. Now, of course, I'm going to be doing this smaller. Now, don't forget to jump over the branches. Make sure you're jumping up, jump over the branches. So now that we have this part of our owl, I'm going to come to the top. And remember our curve? Uh, I'm going to let you decide how you want your curve. Do you want your curve to be a top like, th like this owl has? Or I might do it a little different. I'm going to do it like the other one I had started doing. I'm going to do mine this way. So you decide if you want your curve to go over or under either way. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to put mine, make mine a, um, like a horned owl or the long-eared owl. Um, really, their ears are actually on the side of the eyes. It, there's a, like a little hole underneath the feathers. So it, it's really not ears, but they call it either... Um, the horned owl or the uh, long-eared owl. They even have a short-eared owl, but... Okay, so here's my space. I'm going to go ahead and do me a curve here. And I'm going to come up and do a loop, because I'm going to turn that one into a feather. Let's see, I have a loop here to show you. Here's my loop. It just does a loop. Now it's on one side, and I'm going to go ahead and do another loop. 
on this side. All right. Um, let's see. The next thing I'm going to do is we have our we used our W's. Uh, remember what a V looks like? We're going to do a V like right, right below here. We're going to do a V. So if you did a curved top, just find a space and see. I could have done it even lower. I gave this one a high, being being really high. I'm going to come down lower on this one. And here's my V. It's actually going to be the beak of this owl. And I'm going to come out to the side here and out to the side here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give me a couple of curves for eyes. A couple of curves for eyes. And another curve for the eyes. All right. Uh, let's see, I'm also going to come out to the side here. I like to do this part here to, to kind of break away the face from the rest of that body. Now, you decide if you want to have a wavy line, if you want to have a scallop line. Uh, as far as for a scallop line, a scallop line will actually look like this. This is a scallop line. It's got a curve and a point and a curve and a point. Whereas your wavy line doesn't. It has a curve and a curve and a curve and a curve. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Let's see. My other one I used kind of scallops. I'm going to go ahead and do a zigzag on this one. I like that. Oh, oh, it could be like that one. It's not going to go on the same artwork, but let's see. Do I want the zigzags this way? I'm going to do my zigzag this way. And, yeah, I'm going to do my zigzag this way. There we go. Zigzag there. I'm also going to put a zigzag up here on the very top. And um, I'm going to put some straight lines in this part. If you did a feather, that's going to be a feather, so... We're going to also find another spot for a center spot for our eye. This will be the space that we're going to be coloring in. Uh, after a while, we're going to color it in with black. Everything else will have a little bit of uh, both. Uh, so right now you're doing yours in pencil. And what we're going to do is we're going to trace, outline everything with our black crayon. But I didn't do my pencil because you wouldn't be able to see it. So um, we have this part of our owl. We're going to go ahead and give some straight lines uh, uh, down here. Um, some of them will be straight and some of them will be at a diagonal. All right. Uh, let's see. In the chest area here, if you would like to put rows of uh, to, to show like for feathers, you can, or curves. I think on this one, I am just going to go ahead and do the little U's. U's make great little feathers. Just filling in the space with the U's. And I'm going to draw straight lines coming up because that's going to be the center my feathers. Sometimes I draw little lines on the inside. When I'm doing this project with oil pastel, sometimes I put a lighter color in there. And then when I paint over it, it really shows up. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have, oh, let's don't forget, let's put some uh, feathers up here. There we go, and I'm going to put some straight lines in there. So we've been using curves and straight lines in different directions. And uh, we've been using zigzag lines, or you could use a wavy line. I think I'm going to try that little scallop line. Let's see. I want to, I want to try the little scallop line.
There we go. And I might put some straight lines coming to it. You don't have to, it's up to you. Let's see, a little curved line and then a scallop line. And I'm going to put some lines. And that makes it like really simple if you'd like to use some of those lines. Um, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and get your black crayon. And our job is to trace everything on here. You want to go next to, well, actually, right now, since we're tracing it, uh, you have yours in pencil. Why don't you go on top of the line and trace every one of the lines on top of the line, on top of each line, on top of each line you're tracing. And then we're going to go next to in a minute with our see if this was pencil it would really show it, it'd be now starting you'd be able to see it I want to keep that very center of my eye white In fact, I think I'm going to cut off those little sections on the side. Our next color, like I said, we're going to be using will be the brown. And we're going to do next to So see, I was pretending I was doing this with pencil. But when you would not be able to see it very well, and I would prefer that you can see it. Just mix it. So every line that I have here, I am going to go ahead. Since it's a pencil, I want to cover right over the pencil mark. When we change to a different brown, I have a brown. Um, this time we'll go next to, while we're at it, since we have the black, let's go ahead, leave that very center spot white. You can color it white first if you like. And uh, then go ahead and color the eye. We're going to want to color it and get it really dark. So I'm going to give you a moment to go ahead and color in both eyes. Okay, so just to make sure after you have all your pencil marks traced with the black crayon, we're going to go to the brown crayon, and you're going to trace next to, what did I say? Next to, so you're going to trace next to each one of the black lines, you're going to trace it with the brown. So each one of them you're going to trace next to. I found one I didn't trace in black. If it was in my pencil, I wouldn't be able to see it. Okay, and all the lines coming up. After we trace next to those, we're going to go ahead and trace next to all of the others. What I usually do, like if I'm going to paint this, 
it's going to really look nice with the other colors. And sometimes if you'd like to get, like, if you're going to be painting it with, like, in brown uh, a lot, at times I'll use a brown for this. Um, if you have a peach or a tan color, you could use that inside, and it would show up really nice. Well, besides using the white, when you cover over that, it's going to show up. So you see how I'm trying on purpose to go next to? Now, as far as for the branch, let's go ahead and uh, you're going to trace next to the branch, and then you're going to go ahead and just do straight lines coming across. Straight lines going across. In fact, you're going to go all the way. I'm not going to cut this one on here, but if you had this for your branch, or maybe you have another part of a branch coming out, you're going to be coloring this all the way to both sides of your little box top. That's the only thing that we actually totally color. We're not going to color all of this because um, on those box tops, that makes another color and it looks really cool on our owls. Some owls do have grays and such, so uh, that'll make it look really nice. So I don't want to cover exactly over like I did the first one. I want it to show next to. Could be a long eared owl. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, after we get everything traced next to, now remember you're going to trace everything except the very center of the eye. We did the top and the sides, and I'm going to just leave that space, that other space alone. Okay. I'll let you catch up a moment. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a, an orange crayon and we're going to come back to our V and we're going to put our V in orange and our feet, our W. We're going to put a little W in orange. We don't have to color the whole thing, we just want our V and our W in orange. the V and the W. Okay, so now that we have the V and the W with a little light color on it, we're going to go ahead and get our scissors and we're going to cut out our owl. Of course, now mine is the one that's with the box top. And I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting it out. And here's my little owl. That's what he kind of looks like right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this owl off because he's not going to be on there. Anyway, he might get in the way, so I'm going to actually, I'll decide where I want him, where I'm going to be putting him in a minute. So you finish coloring up yours. Uh, after that, let's see, I might put a little spacer in between. I'm going to be putting something on. I try not to cover up as much. I could just put it here. I want to go ahead and put a nest and we're going to be cutting out a little bit of paper and, and such color it up and uh, all kind of little scraps. Um, paper towel can work. I was using a lot of the back of the uh, cereal box and uh, let's see I could put a little nest somewhere here. Little what I did was I cut up a lot of little pieces that were cut off, made a lot of little strips, and um, I went ahead and I glued them on top so that it makes it look like a little nest. What I'm going to do, I think, with this bird is I'm going to put him here and the other piece is going to be underneath it, right here. I'm going to let him be in the, I kind of like the little spirals showing. And then I might put me a little bitty bird in there for my little owl, since that's in my background. Um, we're going to be doing our little bitty owls in a minute. 
if you would like to do a little owl. If you prefer just the one great big owl, it's totally fine, just like I had with the first one. Um, I'll give you a moment so that you can kind of catch up. We're going to want to go ahead and cut out our owl. So you're going to cut all around the outside edge. You can decide. I like the both pieces, the both edges on here with the brown and the black. It makes it looks, look a little more um, variety in our shading, in our value, the different colors. So after you have your owl um, and, and you've colored it up a little bit, you don't have to really color much because it is on that uh, cord board paper. Uh, and it looks really nice, the different shading, and it gives it a little texture feel. Oh, you can, if you want to create a nest, see, you could use, just use an owl if you like, but I went ahead and did one and created my own little nest, and you can cut out different little pieces if you would like. You don't have to do this part, you can. I use a lot of little scraps, there's so many scraps, and you decide where you want to place your owl. I'm going to just place mine right here. I like to see a little bit of the other colors around, and I'm going to make me a little, since we, we're talking about the parents and the little offspring, the little baby owls, I'm going to make me a little baby owl. Let's see. We're going to, okay, this was my old one. I'm going to go ahead and get my little owl out now to work on. We're going to be Kind of picking a couple little different little styles here and you can use any of the lines like your straight line your curve line wavy line zigzag line so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our paper and at the very top of our paper we're going to go ahead and um, put a couple of little circles so here's my two little circles the first thing we're going to do after we have our two little circles is we're going to go ahead and see the corner of the paper and the little eyeball. We know it's not really a ball, it's actually a tube, but from the eye to the corner of the page, we're going to go ahead and put, oh, let's see, about halfway up, the diagonal up. I'm going to go ahead and put a dot here. Okay, you can't quite see it. A little dot here. There we go. And then on the other side, I'm going to come put a little dot between the two, the, the circle and the corner of my page. I'm going to put a little dot. Next thing I'm going to decide, uh, I'm going to be using curves, a lot of little curves. So we're going to use the curve, either curve up or curve under. I'm going to go ahead and go with the curve under. I like the little curve under look here since the parent has a curve under. Let's see, it didn't come out because I'm doing this at a sideways. There we go. That's, that, that works. Curve under since the parent has that. Um, because the offspring looks just like the parent, right? Then we're going to go ahead and put uh, two other circles. Now, if the circles came out small, you can do yours bigger around it. but mine are pretty good on the inside. That works. There we go. And you can go ahead and put another little circle and just keep working on the outwards, outways from it. Work it outwards, kind of spiral it outwards. That works for my little owl. Okay. Now, uh, on the side here, I'm going to let you decide. We're going to go almost about midway. Do you want to curve around the outside or curve inward? You want to curve outward or inward? See, this one curves outward, goes away from the eyes, and this one curves inward, in towards the eyes. Okay, let's see. I'm going to do my outward. Another outward. See, that's going to be where the, the neck of my owl is. Let me just go ahead and put me one here. There we go. There's my little owl. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is a curve and a curve. Um, this is a curve one way and a curve the other way. That's like our little owl wing. A curve one way 
and a curve the other way. Also, that's how we make leaves. So if you would like to add little leaves in this project, see I have some little leaves here, which I could put anywhere around, maybe some out here. Okay, so if you would like to, you, that's how you make a curve and a curve. And you, you color those up with green. This one is just for my little baby owl. And uh, inside, underneath the, the bird, we're going to just go ahead and do a little curve this way. I'm going to stick him in the nest so I don't need to draw feet. We already have our feet for our other owl. Um, they have four toes. One in the back that's kind of like our thumb and of course three in the front. But um, they won't be seeing it. He'll be all bunched up anyway and it's in the inside our nest. Next thing, decide what kind of lines. Do you want a straight line? Do you want a curved line? Do you want a wavy line? Do you want a zigzag line for the our wings? I might do some zigzags in the belly. Hmm. Who knows? Let's see. Oh, I might do zigzag. Yeah, I'll do some zigzags on the zigzags on my wing. There you go. You decide how many you would like. Maybe the, the bottom, he's just, maybe he's a fledgling. He's about ready to learn to fly. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this one little V's instead of the U's, since I've always done the U's for the others. Now, um, I realized I forgot to put his beak. Now, we're going to go ahead and put the beak right in between the two eyes. Um, you know what a rhombus is, or a diamond shape? Do you know how to do the capital letter A and the capital letter V? It makes an easy rhombus. See the capital letter A and the capital letter V? Well, when you put them together, look, an A and a V, that makes an awesome rhombus. So I'm going to go ahead and put the... A and the V and there's my little bird there we go there we go so now I'm gonna go ahead uh, then you can go ahead and color him up and he'll be ready for his you cut him out and then you can put him in your nest if you want to use them see here's my little bitty bird and I'm gonna go ahead and put him in my nest Well, there's my little project. We will be posting a new lesson every day for kindergarten first and second. These lessons are tied to the school curriculum. Some are visual arts and some are creative movement. So be sure to come back and make art with us tomorrow. If you're interested in supporting programs like this, you can donate to the Kitty Anna Center of the Arts, the nonprofit who manages the PACE program for the Lafayette Parish School Systems. Help keep our teaching artists working. Share our videos and keep making art. Want more? You can book me for private online lessons as a teaching artist. I can lead one-on-one -on -one or group lessons. To inquire about lessons, email me at jshadow2 at aol.com. Please place private lessons in the subject area. It's been a pleasure working with you today. Thank you.